and welcome to our session, How to Contribute to the ANSBO Community. Uh, we are uh, Anwesha and Carol, and we'll do a brief intro of ourselves. Yeah. So I, I'm Carol Chen, and uh, I just listed a bunch of dates because um, I just wanted to show that you know, I have been a Linux user for a while. My first distro was actually Red Hat Linux, not Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but it was, uh, yeah, it was Red Hat Linux 6 point something. So, and uh, I actually finally joined Red Hat, you know, one of my uh, dream jobs in 2016. So, um, it's such an honor to be here. And um, I started contributing to uh, FOSS projects around 2004. I'm actually a bit hazy on the, the exact time because I had to check my own LinkedIn page to find out when that was. <laughs> so, um, and if I had seen such a talk before that, I probably would have contributed earlier because there's actually many different ways to contribute, not just code. So we'll go into that a bit in, in the talk. And uh, the rest are just, you know, uh, uh, showing how, how much of an old geek I am. Uh, I started using IRC a long time ago, and nowadays I am on Matrix. Believe it or not, I can learn new tricks. So <laughs> I, I joined the Matrix. I actually heard about Ma Matrix in 2016-17, um, and I already uh, signed up for my I, uh, ID, Matrix ID, like around then. So. Um, find me on both my work and personal matrix IDs listed there. And um, I'm going to hand off to the much younger Anwesha, who, you know, uh, despite her youthfulness, has a lot of open source experience. So don't be deceived. Plus, she has um, legal chops to back her up. So very powerful combination. But I'll stop talking now and let her continue. Thank you, Carol. Uh, and welcome. Welcome everyone to the talk. Hello, my name is Anvesha, Anvesha Das. I'm a lawyer by education and technologist by passion. I am the uh, one of the newest addition to the Ansible community team. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I help free and open source communities around the globe with my technical, legal, and organizational skills. Um, I'm a proud Pi Lady. I don't know how many of you know about Pi Ladies over here. I am a Pi Ladies organizer at uh, Pi Ladies Stockholm and also I led Pi Ladies efforts in India. I have a blog, uh, anveshadas.in, where I translate legalese to English amongst many other things. And uh, I'm a fellow at Python Software Foundation. Wow, I'm representing Red Hat. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want to share a story with you. Uh, it was 2020 during pandemic. I was talking to a friend of mine who, ha who is a senior technologist who uh, maintained kernel.org for a decade and who is an ex Red Hatter. I was curious that what he is doing during pandemic. I was like, what are you doing? And he said that he's ansibilizing his whole, in whole infrastructure. I said, why? I was curious. And he gave me an answer which actually changed the whole uh, like perspective for me for Ansible. So he said, if something happens to me, then people will be able to understand what and why about my infrastructure. Ansible helps you to think declaratively. Uh, the comment indeed was deep, and it's a fact. But uh, thinking declaratively, is it, is it the only f uh, feature that makes Ansible cool? Not really. There is a lot of uh, things in the list. Agentless architecture, cross-platform cross support, uh, easy way of deploying and uh, uh, deploying in the server. So there are like many in the list, and also, it enhances the security and mitigates human error by me and makes so easy. Like I, I started learning uh, my system administration through Ansible or like lately in Ansible. So, so uh, that is how we are pretty cool actually. So no wonder why An uh, Ansible is the most popular free and open source automation project. Now. When we are talking about Ansible, we are not talking about a single project. Rather, we are talking about a whole ecosystem. 
Right now, we have 20 plus projects inside Ansible ecosystem. Now, and like every other successful open source project, there are certain things which lies at the very core open source ethos, uh, a collaboration, and community. What is Ansible community? Rather, who are Ansible community? You are Ansible community. We all are Ansible community. Whether you are a user, developer, or people like us who get paid to work on Ansible, all of us together form the Ansible community. Now, if you are an Ansible community package user, or you use automation platform, or you are a Red Hat partner, you are part of the community. Also, if you content, uh, if you contribute via content or code, or if you evangelize and like tell other people how cool Ansible is, you are a part of the community. Ansible is blessed to have a very strong community in regards of contributors. Ansible used to be the 10 most popular open source project in GitHub before 2020, before Ansible uh, core and collection split it. Now, if we talk about uh, in terms of users, uh, there are millions of you, like the user base is in millions. And when we want to see that how, what, how big is our contributors base, let's use this chart. So this is a this proves how big is our contributor base. This is a chart dated April 2023. This is show this shows uh, the contribu uh, contribution uh, like staff versus non-staff. Uh, so if you if we see here, it's 57% uh, of the contribution has been made by the uh, uh, by the staff and the rest of it by the community. Now, if we s see the unique authors in this set, 184 has been staff and a staggering number of 4,170 being non-staff. We have used uh, and we have considered PRs and review comments for the last three years on GitHub. Uh, where we have indexed fi uh, like 50,000 plus items and covered 376 GitHub repos. Now, is it actually uh, the graph which shows how big is our contributor base? Actually not. We haven't considered the 30,000 plus roles and collections on Galaxy. We are pretty big. Now, are you interested in and like Ansible and do you find our ecosystem interesting? And maybe some of you want to start contribution or you have started your contribution towards Ansible. Let, let us give, let both of us give you certain pointers to that. Like how can you contribute to Ansible and anyone and everyone can become a hero in the Ansible land? how to become a hero in the Ansible land. There are many, uh, there are many options for you. If you want to contribute via code, which is generally, uh, which is a norm, uh, which is the first thing uh, it comes to the mind. Of course you can, we are a Python shop, majorly our code base is in Python. As I, and as I mentioned, we are a free and open source project. So, and it is licensed under GPL v3. Now, collections, if, uh, so, blah, collect, if you want to share your plugins, your roles and modules, and you think it can be helpful for the community, please come and share it. One of the major reason why Ansible is so, success, uh, so successful and uh, has been uh, adopted by a large number of people is because of its documentation. I am a living proof of that. I have learned Ansible by learning, uh, by learning from the documentation. Now, this documentation, not only our documentation, not only describes the tool, rather it gives you certain practical examples, which is very, very helpful. So if documentation is your passion, please join our documentation team. Oh. 
Ansible meetups. So uh, meetups is a place uh, where upstream and downstream, the users and the contributors, the whole community collaborate with each other. We have 139 plus meetup groups and 52,000 plus members uh, all over the globe. Find one and join one of such meetup groups and share your automation journey. If you're, if you're interested in web design, currently we are trying to build a website. We are in dire need of uh, website designers, UX and UI. Apart from the uh, need which we have in the, uh, our Ansible ecosystem, please join our group. Uh, Carol is going to tell you more about this in her uh, in later part of the talk. And most importantly, run Ansible meetings, share your knowledge, uh, share your uh, share your user journey, share your stories. This is your chance to give back to the community. Now, now in, in this section, in the next part of our talk, we are going to describe each of these in details, like how can you do that? Like how can you contribute via code? Now, as I said, Ansible is a big ecosystem. So you can ask Anvesha, there are like, it, it's a big ecosystem. How can I find that which are the spaces I should look, uh, look for if I want to contribute to Ansible? So these are the spaces you should look for if you want to contribute to Ansible. Three uh, GitHub organizations and Ansible Galaxy. Then the next question comes, there are so many projects in the Ansible universe. Now, which all are the projects which might be interesting? You might want to go and check our new Ansible ecosystem page where you can find a, uh, what is the definition and what does each of the project does. I have actually mentioned few of them over here, but uh, you can go and find about all of them in the Ansible ecosystem page. As I said, uh, we, are a, uh, we are a Python shop, uh, so if you are a Python uh, programmer, please consider contributing to us. You can fix bug or you can report something which might be a problem for you. You don't know, it might be a problem for others as well. So please start contributing uh, by fixing bug or adding a new feature. Now, how to find out how to, like if you want to start contributing, how to find out? So look for these labels, easy fixes and good first start issue, like easy fixes are the good first, uh, first start issues. So these are the labels you should look for when you want to start to contribute. Now the next part is Ansible collection. If you want to start contributing to Ansible collection, it is a very good uh, way of contribute, uh, like a place to start with. Uh, so Ansible collections is what gives Ansible the superpower. And why I say that? Because Ansible, uh, the, the, there are thousands of collections, as I mentioned before, and which, ha which is maintained by the domain experts, which keeps Ansible ahead in, in, in its game and also gives us agility. So if you want to start contributing to collection, it's great. Now how to do that? There's a link, uh, contribute to collections. Uh, if you want to contribute to collections, it's, it's, a, it's a document which will guide you step by step for that. Also, you can upload your collection to uh, galaxy.ansible.com and there you can share your collections with the bigger audience, with the community. Now, and that is how you can become the guardians of the galaxy. Now, if you want to start contributing to any of these projects, uh, I would strongly recommend you, please do come to our booth uh, and talk to Andre and uh, a majority of the Ansible engineers over here. If you have any questions, you can turn around and talk to Adam and Chad who are st uh, sitting over there. And <laughs> who, so please do that. Uh, and now Carol is going to tell you how, what are the other ways you can contribute to? Oh, thank you, Anwesha. There's so much 
in great information in there. So let's continue. All right, uh, I want to already touch a bit on documentation. And one of our um, main docs person is over at the Ansible booth. He's Don Naro. Um, so if you have any doc documentation questions, you can go talk to him. And actually, tomorrow we will have a talk uh, at 2 p.m. And uh, it's about some of the progress and things we have worked on this year. And one of the major things is uh, using personas to define user journeys in the documentation website. And uh, uh, Don will be the, you know, uh, the person who, who will be at the, the, the talk talking about the details. So I'll let him uh, do the honors tomorrow. So please come to the talk if you're interested. Then, um, oops, my speaker notes. Uh, we think about talk documentation, and sometimes you know, you know, like you're thinking, "Oh, I'm new to Ansible. How can I help in the documentation?" And s actually, new users are can be great help because as you go through the documentation to get started, you will probably notice ways to improve to make things clearer that some of us who have used Ansible before take for granted. So. You know, if you find some way like, oh, this is actually missing a step that um, if, if it's specified, it, it will help in the, the process of learning it, of explaining the, the steps of using Ansible. So, you know, you can uh, create an issue or a PR to bring that to our, our attention, to the community's attention, and we can improve the documentation with your help. If you are interested, we have a documentation working group, DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, and with a cute Dog, doggy mascot there. It's every Tuesday at 1800 UTC and it's uh, on Matrix uh, at the docs colon ansible.com matrix room, which is bridged to the ansible uh, docs RLC channel. And uh, actually, this room is also bridged to a Discord channel because we actually have a group of writers from Nigeria, I think, yeah, who are also contributing to Ansible docs. So it's, it's definitely a global uh, community wide effort to improve the docs. Similarly with code, there are some issues you can find in the doc site repo that are easy fixes that you want to get started with. You can search with these uh, labels to find, th find these issues. And uh, the bit.ly link below, Ansible Docs contrib, contrib outlines the process of you know, how, how, how you can um, create a pull request and submit it and what, what information you need to, to contribute to the documentation repo and improve that. Again, Awasha has touched a bit on meetups, so I'll uh, mention a bit more about how you can contribute by organizing a meetup. Um, these are great numbers, uh, tens of thousands of meetup members, uh, more than 100 meetup groups, but honestly, not all these meetup groups that we support are active. Partly due to the pandemic, partly due to various reasons, some people started the meetup group, um, changed jobs, lost interest, things in life happen, so you know they may have uh, abandoned it. So please, if you know of a meetup, Ansible meetup group in your area, you can go to meetup.com, search for it. Um, if you find it and it's not active, and you're interested to um, make, uh, make it active again, come talk to us. Uh, if there's no meetup group in your area and yeah, you want to start one, also come talk to us. And um, if you find a, a meetup group with NC Bull as one of the organizers, that's probably supported by us. So, um, and also besides meetups, which are more kind of local and regional, sometimes in your different languages, um, uh, depending on your audience, we also have presence at many major force events, such as this one. So, but as much as our team would like to be everywhere all at once, um, meeting all of you, uh, we actually depend also on the community, such as you, to represent us, uh, represent the community at events. So I want to give a shout out to Daniel uh, Shire, I think his last name is, who actually did that uh, specifically for Chemnitz Linux Days in Germany. Uh, we were not there, he approached us, uh, he said he would like to have a Ansible workshop or a talk or something, and even had a booth. And you know, we sent him some stickers, and he was there, just sharing about 
uh, Ansible community, contributions, the, the use of uh, joy of using Ansible, and things like that. So, you know, these are little things that, you know, if you have the interest, we can, we want, we want to support you and help you to do things like that. Sure, sometimes, oops. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes organizing a meetup, it, it is a lot of work. Not, not sometimes, it is a lot of work. But there are ways that even if you don't have all the time and um, to do the main organizing, you can help in many different ways. If you have a space for a meetup, you can help to host it. Um, if um, you know you, you don't have time to take care of all the organization, but you have a topic you want to talk about, approach a local organizer and offer to speak at their meetup. And even by attending a meetup, you are contributing, you're helping, because a meetup is nothing without the people, right? Without the audience. So in, there's many ways that you can, what you can do to make meetups happen and be a part of the community. Another thing we want to mention is uh, we're working on, uh, Anwesha is leading this uh, effort. We're working on a meetup toolkit for organizers. There's like a sample emails to find locations, speakers, uh, templates for social media posts, and uh, you know, um, something to get you started. And of course, this thing will also be open to contributions because we realize that many different regions have different um, challenges and um, um, variations about how meetups are organized. So you can also, as a meetup organizer, help other organizers to uh, improve their meetups. Oh, and also, uh, one example is if you want to do a presentation on how to contribute to Ansible, we will upload these slides to the, the sh schedule shed.com uh, after this. And that if you notice on the first slide, there was a common cr uh, Creative Commons license. So feel free to use these slides and at, at your next meetup to talk about how to contribute to Ansible. Chatting sounds like a fun, easy way to hang out with you know, people you share common interests with, right? How is that contribution? Well, by chatting with people in the Ansible space, we have a matrix space, a uh, space on matrix, uh, similar to the DEF conf space that some of you are uh, now in to you know, join, participate in this event. By, you, can uh, you can help by answering questions because a lot of users come on these chat channels to ask um, questions on basic usage or on contributions, code questions, uh, event questions. So, you know, uh, a lot of you have a lot of great knowledge to share. And even if you don't know everything, well, because I usually don't know, all, uh, I don't have most of the answers, but I know um, where to look for the answers. So I help, like, oh, maybe you can talk to Anwesha for this. You can talk to Andre for that. So, you know, you can be the, the person connecting more people in the community. That's a great way to not just help each other, but also build the community spirit. So. What's a community without you know these uh, strong connections and links to each other, right? So, uh, chat chat by just by chatting is a great way you can contribute. And if you are watching or chatting on Matrix and having questions, uh, we will we'll hopefully be able to answer them soon. And I'll, I'll look look at the uh, Matrix room after this talk. Oh, <laughs> this is actually uh, XKCD uh, comic that. By the way, the slides uh, were put together by Leo Gallego, our teammate. So um, I actually found this tweet that uh, somebody tweeted to me a, a while ago because I used to be a hardcore IRC user. I'm like, I'm not, I'm going to stay here for life. <laughs> but uh, I, I got uh, converted to, and, and now I'm a, a main a matrix user, although I do have my two uh, accounts bridged to IRC Nix. But anyway, join us on matrix. So now it's audience participation time. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to scan this uh, QR code, take out your phones now, start scanning. I'll give you a couple of minutes. And uh, again, this is because uh, Leo put together this initial set of slides for uh, Red Hat Summit uh, Ansible Community Day last month. So uh, thanks to him for uh, finding of a bunch of cute cat pictures. So <laughs> if you scan it, you'll you find out what I'm talking about. Uh, please vote, 
And um, <laughs> like, like Leo said, don't just vote for the cutest cat or funniest cat you see, but think about what you might be interested in contributing or what are your you know, strengths and interests. I'm just going to pause for a while. If there's any questions at this time, we can maybe take one. If not, we can wait till the end. All right. So we've gone through quite a bit of many ways that, that you can uh, contribute to Ansible project. And there's definitely not an exhaustive list. There's definitely other ways that we have not mentioned. And there are also a couple of things we're working on that gives you more opportunities to contribute in the future. So if you are aware of um, some of our strategies from the beginning of the year. We talked about how, you know, like, like Anwasha said, Ansible is a large growing project. There's a lot of different sub-projects and, you know, um, different parts of the community. And one of the growing problems, <laughs> growing pains, is that things can get fragmented. So in order to kind of address this fragmentation, two of our kind of main stra strategic um, items for this year are to create a new website and to create a new forum. And we've definitely discussed this very thoroughly with the community. We have had meetings and uh, GitHub issue discussions and things like that. So j just curious, how many of you here knew that we were working on a new website? Good, thank you. So uh, it's a work in progress. There is a repo. Um, that that's you know we're, we're doing this with the community and you're welcome to join the worksite, uh, website working group on Matrix at website .com. Um As with website, you know there's a lot of content that needs to be added and there's a lot of visual designs that needs to happen to kind of pull everything together and like um, we have great you know engineers and writers and stuff like that, but unfortunately we are lacking in some like UX, UI designers, people who have that uh, ability to create engagement through the, the on, through online presence. So if you have that interest, you know, it's an it's a, a easy way to, you know, showcase your talent and also help, uh, help this uh, Ansible community. So, and as the website launch in phases, there will be additional ways to, to contribute, like writing blog posts, creating video content, and you know, if you have great ideas, please come talk to us and also join the uh, website wor working group to share your ideas. The other thing I mentioned is the, the forum. So it will be based on Discourse, and um, uh, it's just a way, because we have many was it how many hundreds of GitHub repos, right? So each of them have you know discussions and issues, and sometimes it's really hard to find uh, if you're looking for something specific to, to have a central place to to find that uh, discussion that's happening. So we we hope that this forum will be able to kind of uh, address some of that and pull the community together in one central place that you can share different ideas, and um, it's. Almost close to the end, where we're you know in the finishing, um, uh, race the finish line here, and hopefully you know within the next couple of weeks or at least the next month, we'll be able to share um, the, the the availability of the forum. It's 99% probably is going to be forum.ansible.com. So uh, once it's confirmed, we will let you know. And please subscribe to the Bullhorn if you haven't already to to stay updated of this. So how do you subscribe to the Bullhorn? How do you, you know, follow all these things that we've said? For now, since we don't have the website ready yet, we do have an ansible.com slash community page that has the Bullhorn information, has some of the project information. And um, so you know, if in the meantime, please uh, stay, keep your eyes on the page to, to stay on top of the updates. Once that's the, the website is ready, it will definitely be announced there, and you can continue. Um, um, following us and interacting with us on the website and the forum. And if you have any questions and want to reach out to us directly, of course, Matrix is one thing, uh, Ansible space, and also ansible-community at redhead.com is another way to reach our whole team directly. And speaking of the whole team, 
Uh, Wenshi, would you like to share with us about, tell us about this? Okay, uh, Carol and I might be present over here, but this is a work of this all these wonderful people. Carol and I also included in the, those list of wonderful people though. But uh, you can see many of them in, in our booth and some of them uh, who are part, as I said, of the bigger Ansible ecosystem uh, will be there in our booth as well. Uh, so please join us in our booth and have, if you have questions, uh, like we love to be interrupted. Uh, and so whenever you find us, grab, uh, grab us and ask whatever you want to ask about Ansible. So here is our wonderful team. You can, so this slide, as Carol has been mentioned a couple of times, has been made by this person with a red hat, Leo. And thank you, Leo, for that. And uh, many of the questions which we said in this talk, like answered in this talk, has been answered by them. We, just, we are just echoing their thoughts. So thank you, our team. Uh, so every project, as we were discussing, every project advances and progresses. So, and it is very essential that we work on the core of that project. Like, what is the thing which what, what we are working for? The mission statement. So we are working for our mission statement. If you uh, uh, if you can have like go to this QR code and we are having a feedback. Like we want your feedback. We need your feedback from uh, uh, for uh, describing and having our new mission statement for Ansible, please consider giving a feedback over there. We would really appreciate it. And uh, with that, do we want to say thank you? Of course we want to say thank you, but in, in before that, any questions from here or online, perhaps? Thank you very much. And uh, again, if you haven't scanned the QR code, it will be available at, at the booth as well. Come, please come talk to us. We would love to hear from you. Um, enjoy the rest of DEF CON. Thank you so much.